Hello, it's Ceres, and today I'm going to introduce you to fades, as well as how to properly utilize them to establish depth illusions. Fades are one of the most versatile tools to improve the aesthetics of your ship, and many of the built-in ships use them to an almost ridiculous extent, to great effect, of course. You'd be extremely hard-pressed to find a single built-in ship that doesn't use at least some. I'll give a preface that though I am an architect and have been paid to make ships for the game, I am by no means objectively correct. The other architects, as well as generally skilled painters in the community, have their own distinctions and tricks that might directly counteract some of the things that I'm saying. Anyway, the most obvious and common usage, to my knowledge, is for the sake of illustrating shadows and texture, most often as such on the fringe systems resistance and monolith cooperative factions. Additionally, the shadow layer, that's most often composed of primarily fades, is typically the very highest or second layer. This helps establish the topographical physiology of a ship, because remember, you're attempting to establish depth and complexity past the surface level. By itself, your ship is an extremely flat canvas, which is what we're trying to fix here. The composition of monolith ships is supposed to have stark white armor plates on top of grey hull, with blue highlights. In order to try and establish this detailing, there's a combination of things we can do. The first thing to try and do is to actually put down white paint that'll be recognized as armor, but currently the white paint isn't enough by itself. One has to keep in mind that the illusion we're trying to forge isn't something that flips on or off, but is a composition of traits that can add to the illusion or weaken it. One of the main things I notice on weaker painters is that they have important traits such as proper shadows, but don't have consistency among the other colors, which detracts from the illusion of depth. So to further strengthen our given illusion here, one adds shadows to the white plate, essentially raising it upwards, such that it's actually casting a shadow. The last thing for this top section is that one of the best tools a painter can take advantage of is the physical structure of the ship itself. By raising specific sections according to the physiology of the ship, it strengthens the illusion further. Additionally, respecting the texture of tiles will further increase how effective the illusion is, even for something as relatively hidden as armor, as you can see in this top right example. An important note for monoliths specifically is that they rarely have the grey color on raised sections, and never ever do they have grey adjacent to white on raised sections. While you can put white on the lower sections for detailing and such, when you raise grey sections it typically damages the illusion, as that's supposed to be the weaker, hidden segment. I find it's always helpful to actually think of the ship in a 3D sense, as that makes it easier to logically paint a given ship. While it is okay to have the white armor on lower layers, that is to say, less destructive to the illusion, when you continue patterns that started on the higher layer it clashes with the shadows. If the raised sections are supposed to be higher, then the contrast of a given pattern continuing on a lower layer causes a lot of damage to the illusion. As such, I both offset this blue line and further develop the pattern on the raised section to better imply that they're separate. Anyway, as much as possible, always respect the textures of the parts themselves. However, as you can see, you can cut corners, literally in this case, and come out fine. But this isn't ideal as the texture of the part itself is still visible, and if you zoom in on the corners of the hyperdrive, clearly interrupt the shadows. No, what you want to do is, as much as possible, let the textures shine, and largely leave the whole block the same color. I'll get more into how you can better deal with and even highlight roof textures sometime in the future, such as how you can cover the right parts of the textured block and still remain completely fine, but that's a topic for a different video. Anyway, if one looks at these two ships I've made, the Accoster and the Crown, they both have raised sections matching the armor in outermost parts of the ship, establishing what's the armor and most prominent sections of the ships. Additionally, one can tell that there's next to no bisecting of roof textures, with the small exception of armor, which causes these ships to look pristine with determinable features rather than the unfortunate paint noise many ships can find themselves in. You have to break up the joining edges of distinct raised platforms. When you can draw a simple line like in these two left examples, it looks hideous. This is one of the easiest ways to make a ship look good and stylish, just add literally anything to break it up. A very useful decal for this is Fade 06, by the way, but typically just adding just a single section of shadows anywhere in this pattern to break up the line makes the paint significantly better. Finally, something that people not may be aware of is that the edges of parts can actually be painted upon or not painted upon, which can lead to very bad looking effects like this. As a beginning painter, I would recommend you just go with a complete black shadow on the outline of your ship. 
and to avoid raising or having slivers like this that cast shadows. So, I paint my fringe systems resistance ships in a very similar way, but do the obvious thing of establishing wear and tear through carefully engineered chaos. Despite the fact that the fringe systems resistance style is scuffed incarnate, you can't use true chaos at all times or it will turn to visual noise. It's about careful application of different decals in specific areas to convey the idea of wear and damage, and this also means that several of the rules I established for the monolith paint style don't apply here, at least not to the same degree. You can use raised sections that have the base layers paint because it instills the idea that the armor is inconsistent and now has a tear or other form of damage that is now revealing the internal hull. Next thing is that because these ships are so scrap based, instead of having regular armor, you can get away with significantly more inconsistent shapes. Consider that these ships are not nearly as designed and vetted, and additionally don't have a canonical signature look that they must conform to, like how the monolith looks blocky. The FSR doesn't have to look frayed, they just are frayed. If you look at the examples provided, while a coster and crown have some pretty consistently sized armor sections, and smaller ones at that, Sorrow and Stomper both have huge armor sections that help give the identity of being composed of a larger dead ship or parts being bolted on and welded together rather than being properly built. Unlike the Monolith faction that has very little variance, and even then it's just different hues of the same color, the FSR has a huge variety of color choices. I'm particularly fond of this aged green, but there's all manner of schemes that you can easily copy from a lot of the different built-ins. Making sure to use the right color choices is very important to the FSR, they shouldn't be exotic or brightly colored, and they make heavy use of the texture option. Lastly, given the nature of the FSR, you can really just mess with fades randomly however you want. As you can see, for the examples provided, instead of having solid levels of armor like the monolith does, a lot of this just can be slightly broken up and tarnished by using fades throughout, or using the shadow layer to apply chips and cracks throughout the armor. One of the main uses of fades is for the extremely iconic and truly glorious highlights that define the Cabal of Soul. While these aren't used as shadows, they still illustrate their ships very well, and tend to still give texture by virtue of being highlights, the brighter part of a ship due to proximity of a light source, after all. Before I can explain how this is done, I have to get into the minutiae of how the layers are set up. For the most part, the Cabal style uses the top layer as accents, the second as shadows, the third as highlights to the base layer, and then the base layer as a duller version of the third layer. Now, you start by covering everything with the shadows of the second layer, and the reason for doing this is because it allows you to easily shape these brighter sections by carving into the shadow. Instead of placing decals, you delete them to reveal the brighter colors underneath. Now, it allows you to effectively create fade shapes otherwise irreproducible, as the shadows cover the unnecessary bits, leaving only the clean and preferred shapes. Attempting to create these shapes without the shadow layer is largely impossible, and is part of the reason why the Cabal has such a distinct and unique paint style. The acute listener may have noticed that I haven't explained what accents are, and why the Cabal often uses the shadows on the second layer instead of the first. The reasoning for this is because when you carve the shadows to reveal the highlights, it limits the amount of complexity you can give to a specific area, and as such it's now easier to use the single accent color and paint it on top of the shadows. Because the accent is a single color and you don't have to worry about complex fade shapes, making use of the shadows simply isn't necessary here. So, now we look to a better example of a dissected Sirius by the ever illustrious Vilda. We can see that the patterns are possible through the use of the shadows on top, and the holes that have been carved into them work together to only present the specific desired shapes. Now, Another usage as opposed to accents of the top color is to have it as another slightly less dark color that serves as the hull, which allows you to continue applying texture as well as intensify the shadows. Vilda's Astrologen and Alhina are both users of this principle, where because of this, though they have less color, have higher quality general hull arrangement and texture. With these, it would be easier to translate into a 3D form but it obviously comes at the cost of an additional color, so to each their own in what they would choose. For the commissions I've done for Jorogumo 4 and Valorant, 
The custom styles they requested utilize the shadows on the lowest background layer, and by doing this, you automatically raise any section that you cover up. While this doesn't support overly complex canvases with lots of sloped blocks or curves, on more simple, brickish ships it allows for a lot more simplicity and ease of function. This particular arrangement allows for you to more easily create more complex armor plates. On top of this, you can use the shiny highlight color of the metal to establish layers as well, though the illusion as I call it is not as strong when you do this. However, because of a downside of this style is having to use fades for your main armor plates when adjacent to others, this method allows you to have more unique shapes if they're really close to other plates. It doesn't hurt to put a fade leading into it though, like such. Important to note is that you don't have to fully commit to a fade for adjacent parts for the entire time. If you put a fade at the base of the plate to establish height, then you don't need to continue it. By doing this, you can still show that one section is roughly lower or higher than the other, but continue having more complex or specific patterns. So one of the defining aspects of this paint style would be how easily one can establish different layers and shadows. You're effectively making use of the base layer as your shadows, so by putting down a single fade, you'd be doing twice as much of the necessary work for a different style. In fact, because of this ease, I might go so far as to say that this is the style I recommend practicing with for beginners, more so than the other ones to help learn about how the shapes and wiring interact with one each other. The other defining aspect is the wiring, or having the main color be on the lowest layer with no interaction with the armor plating, which is also a theme that is used on some imperial ships with the red. In all cases, the rest of the colors are for the hull and armor, and it leaves the wiring, as I call it, being the main pop of the ship, and hugely complement the other duller colors. In these two examples, the pink and the orange are clearly both the most visible parts of the ship, and weaving that into your ship in between the armor plates and having it fade into and under the ship is often the best parts of this style. Now for some miscellaneous tricks. As fades are all for the most part set up exactly along the grid, it can sometimes be necessary to bridge the cap between half block based shapes to the fade itself. Now, past the obvious or typical solution of just extending the section you're raising, you can also do the inverse, ex putting the shadows in, bridging the gap, essentially extending the shadow. This also means you can add to the different textures very easily as the shadow melds with the fades exquisitely thick or tile-wide shadows, I find, start cracking the illusion of depth. Consider the example of there being actual depth and texture here, right? If these two armor plates are too far apart, realistically you would be able to see into the gap. I can actually produce this effect by using two shadow layers, and you can see that it's lighter in between them, and that there's actual decals there. However, because using two shadow layers is uncommon, a more common and easier solution is to just move the plates together, or literally just thinning the shadow as it helps preserve the illusion. Now, that also leads into the next trick where because you are already set up the height fades, you can add texture to a ship by using any manner of shapes with the same shadow color, such as curves or half blocks. By doing this, it allows you to create more complex shapes for shadows rather than being limited to fades. A common feature that can be used moderately to aggressively is the half fade, specifically decal fade 05, as it's a very easy addition that can instantly add additional texture and intricacy to a more boring or plain segment. A good example would be one of my ships, the Monolith Haymaker, which uses 50 spread throughout the ship. Mind you, all fades can be used to the same degree to add texture in a similar fashion, it's just the case that this one is the most frequently and easily used. Closing statements. If I wanted only a few things to be taken away from this, it would be primarily to respect roof textures, keep in mind the physical topography of the ship, be consistent, and have fun. Keep in mind that this is a game, and ideally you're always having fun when you're playing it. Though practice and hardship is the basis of all skills, keep in mind that you'll yield worse results if you try to paint while irritated or otherwise distracted. Anyway, thank you for watching, and have a splendid weekend.